Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, uh, I'm so appreciative of you guys and everyone that's been taking the time to check out these videos, learning about what an underwriter does, how to become an underwriter, how to be successful in the business of mortgage, especially as a mortgage underwriter. Now, please be aware that even from a perspective of a loan processor or a loan closer, or even someone who's going to be working as a loan originator, it's important to know some of these items. So again, the courses does help you for especially, and it's geared specifically for those who are looking to get into the underwriting world. But what you can gain out of this course is for those of you who are in the mortgage business, what's, whatever department in the mortgage business that you're in, it's helpful as well for you because it's good for you to understand the ins and outs of how these loans are reviewed and how these loans are actually made, how decisions are made on this loan. So today we're going to be going over the appraisal reports. There's a few things that I'm going to talk to you guys about. Again, the the link to the course is in the description below. So you can always click on the link below and you can access the course information and help those of you who are interested in, uh, of course, working as a mortgage underwriter or even getting a job as a credit analyst. So again, let's go into today's uh, video. Let's talk a little bit about the appraisal report, uh, some of the things that I've highlighted. But now be aware that what's also going to happen is when you do take the course, I actually do a full appraisal report review. So I have some a lot more information outside of what I'm providing to, to you guys right now. It's about 70 hours long total. Uh, it's about 21 videos, roughly around 70 hours of information uh, that would help you with learning all the steps that an underwriter has to know. And the main thing that I've also done in these videos are also taking the time to review each document how and how these documents are reviewed and what this information that you need to know on the documents are so let's get into this video let's talk about the appraisal report again if you have any questions leave a you know leave a comment in the comment box below and i'll be glad to go ahead and uh, reach reach out to you and i'll respond to as many questions as i can so in regards to an appraisal report uh, the first things that we have to remember is there are a few forms that are used for an appraisal so today i want to talk to you guys about some of those forms and what type of properties these forms are that are used will be. So now again, if you are taking my course, I do have a PDF version of everything that I've put together. So again, you have this as a book. So you can, of course, download this downloadable book. Pro, uh, book. You can also listen to the videos as well as do the test cases, which we'll do side by side together. So on an appraisal form, there are a few forms that are important for an underwriter to know. Again, as an underwriter, as you, when you review these appraisal forms, it should tell you that how these forms look like, what these forms are, and what specific type of property that you are reviewing when you're looking at these appraisal forms. And most importantly, some properties have additional items to know. So like, for example, a condominium might have homeowners association dues and sometimes a single family might not have homeowners association dues so again when you look at the appraisal form and the appraisal report it helps you to know if there's any additional items that you need to know when you're reviewing these uh, reports so in an appraisal form uh the form 1004 so 101004 1004 is what we how we call it is used for a single family the form 1004c is used for a manufactured home the Form 1004-D is an appraisal update. So it's usually an update to either a Form 1004 or a Form 1004-C. So if there's any updates to the appraisal, in, if you're working on an appraisal that is a subject to, so meaning the appraisal is subject to an inspection that needs to be done or a subject to a repair that needs to be done, at that point, we'll be using the 1004 uh, D to be able to make sure that we now report this information properly. There's also a form 1004 MC. So again, when you see C, remember it's manufactured homes and MC 1004 MC stands for market conditions addendum. Again, so the form 1004 MC is a market conditions addendum. It's important that you make uh, able to understand the distinction. Okay. So form 1007 is a rent survey schedule. The rent survey schedule is used for properties when you are buying an investment property. What you would want to understand is that the person who is actually uh, purchasing the investment properties might not even know what the rental market looks like. And again, it's just how it works and how the world is. Not everybody's 100% uh, educated on the markets that they're buying to rent in. So that form 1007, would actually allow you to be able to know what kind of rents that you can charge in that market. Some people can use Zillow, you can use Redfin to give you an idea. But if you want to get the actuals, 
I would you, you would want to use the form 1007 because what that does is that actually looks at all the rental properties in the area and what each rental property is being rented for. And it gives you a full survey of that. So now you also have a form 1025, which is a small residential income property report. That's, a, of course, that's also different from a condominium, right? So the condominium will be a form 1073. And that's for an individual condominium unit. Now for form 1075, that's for the exterior only of a condominium report. So meaning they don't go into, the appraiser does not go into the property and doesn't do a full review of what the inside of the property looks like and doesn't actually, you know, spend time taking pictures of the interior. It's just strictly focused on the exterior of the condominium. There's also form 2000 or 2000, if for those of you who want to stay in line with the way we've been calling the digits, it will be, and that will be used for one unit residential field review form. Again, this is for one unit. And when you say one unit, well, you know, it could be a single family, it could be one uh, out of a duplex, or just one unit uh, residential field review form. So a form 2000A will be two to four unit residential appraisal field review. So again, what this does is for any properties that you're buying that is a duplex, triplex, fourplex, those properties will be looking at using a form uh, 2000A. And that's how the appraiser can go out there looking the field to see if there are any comparable properties and also use that to make his decision on what the value of your multifamily property would be. So from 2006, is a desk review form. Uh, that's when the appraisers actually don't go out directly to the property and they use uh, desktop analysis as technology that can allow them to get what these values are. There's also form 2055. That's an exterior only residential report. Again, this is just strictly focused on the out exterior of a property, not, and it's not, you know, taking into account anything that goes on in the interior. There's also a residential form 2090, that's for co-ops. Now, co-ops and condominiums are relatively similar, but just in order for you, again, for those of you who are looking to get into the underwriting world or looking to stay in the mortgage world, understand that the difference between a co-op and a condo usually is there is a doorman in a co-op and there's not a doorman in a condominium. That's the easiest way to look at it. Now, of course, there's still a few uh, you know, nuances and things that are a little different, but again, just to make it very easy for you, if somebody asks you that quick question, hey, how can you differentiate between a co-op and a condo, just understand that the co-ops typically have a doorman and the condominiums typically do not have doorman. Again, so again, we're looking at a form, form 2095, that's an exterior only inspection co-op report. A form 216 will be for an operating income statement. So now an operating income statement is something that works like a profit and loss statement. For those of you who understand the business side of things, uh, that would be like a profit and loss and PL for those of you who've heard PL. And that would be an income statement. And this is used with a 1025. Again, when we looked on our forms before, which means small residential income property, a 1004 for a single family or 1073 for income and expenses. Now, again, remember, this will be when you are buying a rental property, this form 216 is an operating income statement to, that will be used in accordance with any of these forms to be able to fully describe every detail that we need the, the uh, lender needs to know about the appraisal. So again, if you're working in the underwriting side of things, you are part of the lending group, you have to know these things. If you're working as a loan officer, it's also important for you to know these things because if you do have a copy of that appraisal, you can be able to understand how to look at this appraisal and how to put a proper package together for your clients. So again, there's also the land appraisal report. This, there's not a form number on this one. This one is used for vacant land only. And there's also something called an REO addendum. An REO addendum starts, it stands for real estate owned addendum. And this real estate owned addendum is used with a 1004 or 1025. Now, this is when you're buying a bank bank uh, real estate owned property or you're buying a property that is you know potentially as an investor so most for the most part if you're working front end underwriting and you're doing just strictly residential and you're not working too many of the uh, investment property side and you're not working with investors and things like that you will probably be using more of the 10 or 1004 is the 1004c 1004d as well as the 1073 and 1075 form
forms. So again, folks, this is important and crucial for you to know, because again, it's important to understand all these items when you are reviewing your appraisal report. Understand that most appraisal reports do have market condition addendums that are added to those. So you have to understand what those things stand for and how those things look and be able to read what those market conditions and addendums and just don't skip through those. Uh, most appraisal reports are going to contain subject photos. Now I have a story and, and it's a pretty interesting situation because um, in my past life, when I was working as an actual underwriter before I got into leadership and being able to be self-employed, I actually reviewed a file. And one of those files that I reviewed one thing that I noticed was the subject photos that they sent me had the front of the of the property that looked exactly like a single family home. Well, the problem was when I looked at the rest of the pictures, I realized that the whole property was actually a barn. So it showed like a single family home. You, you had a driveway to it. And then the rest of it was a barn. And I kept wondering what happened to the rest of the house. So believe it or not, you have to be able to review your photos. It's a hilarious situation that could have happened because as a lender, you're thinking you're buying up, you are going to be, you know, lending on the property. And if I just looked at the photos and did a quick scan without taking details into the subject photos, I would have probably moved this loan forward and it would have cost me potentially my job because I practically just approved a loan on a barn. And typically most lenders don't approve loans on barns unless it's probably for like a land loan. But in this case, the loan was for supposed to be for a single family primary residence home and the, all they had on the property was a barn. So again, subject photos are important to understand. It's important for you to know. Uh, another situation too would be the comparable photos, right? So a lot of times when you're looking at these properties and you look at the subject photos and everything looks good, you also want to see what the comparables look like. And the beauty of this is for every appraisal report, there's an, a, a comparable map as well as comparable photos that you could measure hand in hand to make sure everything is actually proper and correct. So again, folks, this is important and crucial for you to know because when you're reviewing an appraisal, you have to understand a lot of these items items that will be on the appraisal and understand how to read these items. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about, it will be something we call the building sketch. Uh, with the building sketch, now again, it's not what the uh, an architect would draw the property out to be exactly, but it'll be a sketch of what the layout of the property looks like. So when you're looking at the photos, you can compare those photos with what the sketch looks like and gives you an idea of what the house looks like. Again, remember as a mortgage underwriter or as an underwriter or credit analyst, your main position and your main job description is mitigating risk. You have to know how to mitigate risk and how to, how to make sure you are helping your lender with handling risk the right way. That's why you pay the big bucks. That's why, you know, the underwriter position is one of the highest paid positions when it comes to the mortgage industry. And they pay you because you are the last line of defense to catch any potential issues before these loans are packaged and sold out to investors. So again, when you're reviewing these reports, you have to keep all these things in mind. You can't just kind of go with the mindset of, you know, you're just looking at files and you, you've gotten used to the mundane process of working with this. And again, I believe you guys could excel in this process. And I'm excited and I'm looking forward to being able to see your success and watch you guys do a wonderful job in working as a mortgage underwriter. Thank you very much for watching this video. Peace.